In the year 1451, the 19-year-old Mehmed II ascends to the Ottoman throne and immediately begins preparations for the taking of Constantinople, the capital and last great holdout of the Roman Empire. Sensing that this was his moment, Mehmed ordered the call and marched his army towards Constantinople on the 23rd of March, 1453, after only two years of being in power. Back in Constantinople, Emperor Constantine XI, knowing he lacked the manpower to properly defend the city, desperately called on Western nations to come to the city's aid. The Romans began preparations, storing food, gathering supplies, and recruiting every able-bodied man available. Their fleet was made up of 26 ships, and manpower numbered at about 5,000 of their own soldiers, and about 2,000 foreigners, bringing in the total to about 7,000. The most notable of the foreign soldiers was the Genoese commander Giovanni Justiniani, and his private army of 700 professional soldiers. His arrival was a welcoming sight, but he brought nowhere near enough men to match the Ottoman strength. The army that they were about to face numbered at about 80,000 men, including an elite infantry corps called the Janissaries. The Ottoman fleet numbered at about 120 ships. Constantine needed every advantage he could get, so he ordered a chain be raised to block any attacking ships from entering the Golden Horn and exposing the sea wall. And with the wall secured, he could place more soldiers along the Theodosian walls. When deploying the soldiers, Constantine and Justiniani predicted that the Sultan would attack the walls at its weakest point by the Lycus River and concentrated most of the defenders there. On April 5th, Mehmed arrived at the Ottoman camp outside the city and divided his forces into three parts and began the siege the next day. The first army faced the northernmost wall at Blatrine, down to the fifth military gate. The second was placed from the gate of St. Romanus down to the sea. The third was made up of Janissaries, designed to put as much pressure on the defenders as possible. The Janissaries were placed, as Constantine predicted, along the Lycus River. During the initial stages of the siege, the millennia-old wall seemed to be defending well against the Ottoman artillery. But on the fifth day of the siege, cannons concentrated fire on one part of the wall at the St. Romanus Gate and unleashed volley after volley of uninterrupted cannon fire. But the cannons took an incredibly long time to reload, giving the defenders time to make repairs on the wall. This soon became a pattern. The cannons would deal damage on the limestone walls, and the defenders would repair them during the night. On the twelfth day of the siege, a break in the walls appeared, and the Sultan hastily gave the order for a general assault. The defenders, led by Constantine and Justiniani, responded with a mass of arrows, debris, and Greek fire, managing to repel the attack. Just two days later, three Genoese ships brought weapons and supplies through the Golden Horn. The ships resupplied the defenders and replenished morale. An incursion into the Golden Horn was attempted by the Ottoman navy, but the chain held and the Ottoman ships could not go through. On day 31, a massive assault was ordered, then again five days later, but both were repelled, which prompted the construction of an enormous wooden siege tower. A third attack on day 37 came with the support of the war machine, but Justiniani managed to destroy it with barrels of gunpowder that would roll and explode by the base of the tower. Following the failures of the attacks, the Turks began to dig tunnels under the walls, which were thwarted by the engineer Johannes Grant by digging parallel tunnels in order to destroy them. The Sultan knew that he needed access to the Golden Horn. Blocked by the chain, the Sultan ordered 70 of his ships to be pushed through land by rolling them on wood with the help of oxen and men. The ships successfully reached the Golden Horn, bypassing the chain altogether and caught the Romans by surprise. During all this, the Genoese and Galata, now eager to stay on the winning side, kept information about the ship's movements. And with that, the opening of the sea wall now stretched Constantine's forces thin. And with this new advantage, Mehmed ordered a gathering of the war council and planned a final assault on the city by land and sea that would occur on May 29th. The day before the final assault was a quiet day in the Ottoman camps, as Mehmed ordered a day of rest and prayer before the final assault. Sensing that the moment of truth was upon them, Constantine ordered that icons and relics from the churches be taken around the walls while the church bells rang. The crowd of Orthodox and Catholic joined in prayer as the divide between the East and West churches, at least for a moment, were forgotten. 
Shortly before midnight on the same day, Ottoman auxiliaries were sent into the Blachernay wall, essentially as cannon fodder, in order to tire the defenders, followed by a second wave of Anatolians, who then managed to breach into the city, but were promptly driven back by the defenders. Then, a final wave of elite Janissaries were sent, whom were met by Justiniani. The defenders amazingly held, but Justiniani was wounded during the fighting and retreated back to the harbor where a boat was waiting for him. He would die from his wounds a few days later. Seeing their commander retreating to the rear, the Blachernay defense began to collapse. Adding to the misfortunes of the defenders, a small gate called Kirkaporta was left open by accident, allowing the first 50 or so Ottoman troops to enter the city. The Ottomans raised their banner atop an inner wall and opened fire on the defenders down below. This spread panic, beginning the rout of the defenders of the Blachernay section of the walls, allowing more invaders in, whom then opened more gates. To the south, Constantine led forces defending the walls in the Lycus Valley and the gate of St. Romanus. With the enemy now surging through the gates and seeing the inevitable, Constantine tore off his royal garments in a fury and led a desperate last charge against the enemy. With the main defense now fallen, some of the remaining soldiers successfully fled while others attempted to protect their homes and family to no avail. The walls were completely lost, and what was to come was nothing short of sheer carnage. The Ottoman soldiers swept through the city streets and was allowed three days of plunder.